the seismic load effect. Um, e stands, I guess, for earthquake. Um, and basically, it can break down into a horizontal or a vertical component. So it, the definition would be a reaction of member force based on a combination of horizontal and vertical earthquake force. So what that means is translated into engineering terms below is that E equals the horizontal component of the earthquake load effect and the vertical component of the earthquake load effect. And we see this, I mean, in practice as well, when there's a big devastating earthquake, it actually typically has a high um, vertical component as opposed to horizontal, which is always kind of surprising, but that's actually the one that um, can cause more damage. So it's important to recognize that even though we really focus on our earthquake loads as this horizontal lateral phenomenon, um, there are, there's a vertical component too. So this is kind of like our typical case, um, but there can be some vertical elements here. Um, and you either, you'll have them going in either direction um, based on whichever is really worse for the building. So we'll get into what, yeah, which is worse um, in a few minutes. So you have here, once we break it down into horizontal and vertical, we can break those individual terms down into their own equations. So for the horizontal force, we have this QE, which is the horizontal seismic force based on the base shear or the seismic lateral force. And that's multiplied by rho, which we know is the redundancy factor. We talked about that. I, I was going to if it was last Saturday or Sunday, um, but it was a while ago. So, yeah, so we've talked about the redundancy factor. We've seen that. It's either 1.0 1, 1 or 1.3. And then we have a vertical component, which is 0 0.2 times SDS times D. So D is dead load. So this is the same as you would have in, like, your 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. Um, the dead load. So it's the gravity, um, and we know that when we look at the earthquake seismic weight, we are really trying to look at the permanent loads. So that's why we have the D there, and then the SDS is the um, ground, it's the design ground acceleration parameter based on the location, the site class, um, everything. So that's kind of our ground acceleration times our seismic weight um, in a factor there. Okay, and then when we're looking at the simplified method for foundations, the EV component can equal zero uh, when SDS is less than 0.125. So that's just kind of an exception. So hopefully that's pretty clear on how we get our um, E factors.